Hello everyone, welcome into Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah Presents. Me, Deborah. Hi! Um, with <clears throat> a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of a talk through. Now if you're a super uber beginner, like I was at the beginning of this year, you might be wondering, what do I need to crochet? What kind of tools? How do I do this? How do I start? Uh, you need a crochet hook and you need some yarn. Okay, I've got two examples of that here. For crochet hook, you don't have to get all extra. You don't need a whole set. If you want to just try and start and practice, this comes from Walmart. If Walmart is an option for you, you can always go. They're less than $3, I think, for a big old ball of yarn. This is actually a good bit of yarn. Uh, it's 100% acrylic. It's not really soft, but when you wash it gently, it will soften up some. And here's a little bit about the label. What does all this stuff mean? This stuff up here is pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> 397 yards, 363 meters, 7 ounces, 198.4 grams. That's what is contained in this ball of yarn. At least it was when it was new. I have used a little bit out of it, but close enough for government work, right? The weight on it is a medium four. Now, every yarn will have a weight associated with it. And I'm, what it actually means is, is how many times, there, there's a calculation with how many times it'll wrap around a thing to an inch, and then they do a calculation with that. Basically, your most common weight of yarn is gonna be a four weight. You'll hear people call it a four weight or an Aran weight, which is mostly uh, over in, uh, in Europe and England or you'll hear it called a worsted weight, okay? There can be thicker ones and thinner ones. It just depends on how the yarn is woven or twisted. You can see here, there's a twist to that yarn. That's what keeps all of the threads and bits and bobs together, okay? Now for a hook. On this label you'll see, it gives you knitting needle information uh, as far as I'm concerned, knitting is magic, so I'm going to skip that part. I just go to the crochet. The crochet, it gives you gauge information. This here, because it's got a little box around it, uh, 15 rows, 12 single crochets is going to be 4 inches by 4 inches or 10 by 10 centimeters. You can read all that in detail there. That is not that important at this point. If you're just starting off and you just want to figure stuff out, what you need to know in there, 5.5 millimeter or USI or number nine. Each of these hooks has a size. Now, I didn't go and buy mine at the craft store. I didn't go and buy mine at Walmart. I ordered mine from wish.com. Not sponsored, no affiliation, blah, blah, blah. Because I was kind of extra and I wanted a whole set. So I got a bunch of hooks, and those that I got were all labeled with just the millimeters, which is fine, because these days, everything pretty much gets broken down that way. People will tell you four or five different ways to know your size hook. If you're not that extra like me, just pick up one hook that matches the size of the yarn that you've purchased at Walmart. If you just want to, you know, pick it up and give it a shot, try that, okay? On your yarn label, you're also gonna see some other things. You will have someplace on there a material content. This is 100% acrylic. Your care instructions, machine wash, tumble dry. And it says, machine washing and drying. Wash in water, not exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius at delicate setting. Do not bleach, tumble dry at low heat, delicate setting. Do not iron or press and do not dry clean. The reason for that is acrylic is essentially plastic doesn't feel like plastic, but if you get the temperature too hot on it, it will start to melt and it'll get hard and kind of crunchy yarn. You don't want the crunchy yarn. So what a lot of people will suggest is either wash it by hand or put it in cold on gentle and lay it flat to dry or tumble it with no heat or very, very low heat to get some of the water out and then lay it flat to dry because you want to take care of it and have it last as long as you can. Now to start off, when you're starting to crochet, you always hear people and you'll see people, because you'll see people start off with, start with a slip knot. You know what? My first couple of months of crocheting, I did not know how to do that. No shame in that. You don't know till you know, right? So 
let's show you how to do a slip knot. I'm going to move this off to the side so there's more room for my big old hands. A slip knot is not just tying a knot. A slip knot you can pull back out. Okay. There are a zillion different ways to do a slip knot. I was only a Girl Scout for about five minutes. Never learned how to tie knots. I don't know if that's a Girl Scout thing or not. I wrap it around my fingers. Reach through and bring up that little guy. Say, no, that's too big. That's not going to hold anything. That's okay. Stick your hook in there. And the thing with a slip knot is you can tighten it or loosen it. There you go. You've started your first step to crocheting. That's a slip knot. I'm going to take it back off the hook because what we mean when we say a slip knot, it's gone. As I've heard someone say before, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There you go. And I'm going to do it one more time just to show you. Set the hook down. Wrap it around my fingers. Okay, you see how it's just wrapped around. Reach behind. Grab that yarn and pull it up. And if you want to know if you've done it correctly, you can either pull it all the way closed or you could just pull it like this and see, hey, ding, it's gone. Slip knot. Don't you feel like you can go work on a ship now? You can tie those knots? No, not me, not at all. But that's how it is. Once I learned that, I was like, are you kidding me? Why didn't I know this before? But I think a lot of people just presume that you know, because it's one of the first things that most people learn to do. I kind of did it backwards. I was just tying a knot and, and making a solid knot around, which you can do. There's no shame in that. But when you hear people say, make your slip knot, that's what they're talking about. Now, once you have your slip knot formed, some other terminology that might be interesting to you, this is your tail. It's going to be an end that flops around when you're done crocheting, unless you weave it in. There's your tail. There's your working yarn. Here is your hook. This is the shaft of your crochet hook. And I'm going to end this one before we even start making any stitches with another little bit of terminology, yarn over. That's all they're talking about wrap that yarn around your hook because it will lead to other wonderful things. Yarn over. Now, I don't have the best form. Most people, when they're working with their crochet, they hold their yarn like this when they're working. To hold my finger straight like that is actually painful. Um, so you know what? You do what works for you. I recommend watching other people crochet, picking up what you can from them because there is not definitively one right way or one wrong way to do these things. Crochet is a skill, but it's also an art. So don't be afraid to try. I am a beginner. Um, I'm recording this in August of 2021. I started crocheting in January of 2021. And you look at my channel, you can see that I've done a ton of things. I don't do fancy things. I don't read patterns really well, or once I start doing a pattern, I'm like, hey, let me change things here. But that's what's fun about it. Don't be afraid to jump into crochet. It's a great art form. It's very relaxing once you get into the rhythm of it. Um, I now bring crochet with me wherever I go so I can sit down and crank a little something out. Keep me occupied. Keep me from being annoyed at people because the world is very peopley out there. But also because I can't just watch YouTube videos because that's a lot of data and I don't have a super high data plan on my phone. <laughs> so please enjoy the crochet journey. Don't be afraid to try something new. And the worst thing that happens is you got to pull it out and frog it. I'll explain more about frogging it in another episode. 
Thanks for coming by. Okay, this is Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah. Uh, playlist links are down below. Also, a lot of stuff in the description box, so stop by there. Leave me a comment um, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for coming by. We'll see you soon.